So since the Orlando tragedy, I've been seeing a post that's been floating around about the uh, gun owner who is standing behind me in a store and willing to uh, protect me and my family as they protect theirs and so forth and so on. And um, while I support your right to uh, carry uh, firearms, and I hope you're trained in doing so, um, I do have to say that I didn't ask you to, and a lot of people aren't asking you to. I find that it's a bit arrogant to ask for thanks for something that you potentially may do while there are people who know CPR that we're not um, getting uh, these messages to say, hey, thank me for potentially saving you from choking or uh, delivering first aid at a car accident or, you know, whatever. If you're going to serve your community, do it anonymously and do it because it's how you best feel you can serve the people around you, not because there's a thanks attached to um, a particular skill or certification that comes with it, because there's many people who don't have those and are still willing to go out and essentially uh, protect others. Um, while I say that, um, I want to thank real heroes, and I'm not saying that people who carry guns aren't p potentially heroic, but that's the key point, potentially. I'm talking about active, everyday heroes. I'm talking about people who volunteer their time at um, crisis shelters um, with battered women and uh, orphaned children and um, go to um, the shelters and help feed the hungry and spend their time with the dying through hospice and go to schools and talk to kids and shape lives. Those are preventable tragedies that we see every day happening around us. A random mass shooting is something that you have to almost be on the spot for. But hunger, starvation, um, the disenfranchised is around us all the time. So please, if you want to serve your community by protecting it with a firearm, that's great at the moment of impact. But you can also find other ways to do this as well. And it's not saying that people who carry guns are just heartless and selfish and don't do those other things as well. Um, I know plenty of people who do, and um, they're aces. So there are just better ways of saving lives rather than waiting to take lives. That's my only point to that. Um, I also will say that, in my estimation, terrorism is terrorism. Um, it doesn't matter what the motivation was, whether it's religious, political, whatever it is, terrorism is terrorism and it affects us all because we're all humans. At the beginning and the end of our lives, we are human. We are born the same and we die the same. That's how we know that we're, we're all people. And what we do in the meantime, whether it's um, you know your skin color or how we, how we live, um, through skin color, through religion, through national origin, through um, sexual orientation, whatever, we're still all human and it affects us the same. So it's high time that we started coming up with real solutions, not finger pointing and end this divisive mentality because um, there's good and bad in every demographic. So again, um, let's just do the best that we can for our community. Peace, love, unity, solidarity. Okay, so I'm going to piggyback off of what I said, I don't know, 2017, 18, and the Orlando that I was referencing was the uh, Orlando mass shootings, and I believe it was at the nightclub, um, and so that was just my thoughts at the time, and there was a pushback from people at the time, I remember that in social media, uh, gun owners in particular saying, you know, well, you know, you're welcome for me potentially saving your life. And I still stand by that. There's a lot of people who do not ask other people to use guns on their behalf. And I understand the sentiment, but I still am going to double down on what I said before about why not learn CPR, not saying that all gun owners don't know CPR, but there's a lot that don't, I'm sure. So I'm just going to go and look. Pardon me, I got some notes here. So when we're talking about CPR, there were 5,553 choking deaths in 2022. So if we're talking about thanking people and serving the community and things like that, CPR would, be, would have been great because I'm sure a lot of those could have been prevented had somebody sprung into action at the time that it was happening. So just imagine if you know, you're choking to death and you can see somebody, you know, who can't help you, but they can help certainly shoot the person who might come in and try to rob the place. It's just got to, you know, I, you know where I'm going with this. And it's not to down gun owners. I'm just saying we can't just want thanks for one thing. Um, there were 805,000, 100,000 heart attacks annually. 
695,000 of those were heart attack related deaths. So again, CPR probably could have saved some of those. Now, some people are just, they just expire when they do and that's what it is. But I'm sure that a lot of those were still preventable because we know that with CPR, uh, CPR performed in the in those first crucial minutes of a heart attack or whatever it is, airway construction, any of that stuff, your chances of survival go up radically if you can do that in a quality fashion until uh, you know uh, the ambulance comes or somebody else with more training or knowledge can intervene. So again, but we don't see people walking around asking for thanks for things like that. This is this is just my point. Um, and this is, again, <sighs> this is hard because there's bad apples in every, in every area. So I'm sure there's a lot of gun owners that are like, that's not us, we don't say that. And you're right, you're right. So it's not fair, but I'm still just prefacing all of this. So please just bear with me, don't, don't, uh, don't cancel me. So uh, if we're talking about other problems in society, where there's a lot of lives that can be saved. Um, what about feeding the homeless? So I have 9,300 malnutrition deaths in 2018. And in 2022, it was just north of 20,000. So that number doubled. So we could be giving out food rather, you know, we could be helping. That's that's all I'm going to say. Um now you might say, well, they were homeless, so some might have been on drugs. So let's let's touch into drugs. Three hundred and fifteen thousand hospital deaths, I'm guessing relating to medication. Three hundred and ninety thousand psychiatric du- drug deaths. Seven hundred thousand synthetic opioids, those are your you know, you know those ones. And one hundred and seven thousand NSAID, that's non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs ibuprofen and aspirin for pain relief and there's a bunch of other ones too but you those are the two that you would know and the aspirin for pain relief isn't just a regular dose I, i'm thinking it's like the heavier stuff when you're really hurting and they sell the extra strength that sort of stuff but there you go so all in all there was eight hundred and eighty two thousand drug deaths in the united states and they put that annually that was and that report was as of um this year so why aren't we helping that community? Let me keep going. So probably some of you heard me say psych drugs, so they're crazy, right? Mental health issues. Well, uh, research has shown that 46% of people who die by suicide had known mental health conditions and several other factors put that person at risk, including their family having a history of it. So while we may not be able to be clinically um, certified and licensed to help some people in those areas, I know that there's a lot of things that we see, do, and do not react to based off of these things. One, going back to just the whole, you know, the gun thing. Well, there's how many times do we hear people say something about having a gun or wanting to use a gun or whatever, and nobody says anything. So there's a point where we have to start being more proactive rather than just waiting to hope that we get to, you know, uh, use something. Or maybe a lot of people hope that they don't have to, but... It still comes to that, and this is what I'm pushing back against, just those people that were saying that. This is not all gun owners. Uh, let's see. So, let's go to the, the stopping crimes. And there was no real hard number for this, and I looked in a few different sources, and what I saw was the number was ranging from 125,000 to 3 million annually. That's a radical range. So I think that what you're going to have to decipher is, were these crimes things that were um, proven? Were these crimes things that were witnessed by other people who could verify it was a crime? Like somebody, you know, was trying to break into your home and the neighbor saw it and you shot that, you know, the entry person in self-defense or the person that was trying to rob the bank or, you know, things like that. Because we've seen a lot of times where there's a lot of, and again, not everybody with the gun, but there's a lot of irresponsible trigger happy people who just want to shoot somebody and a lot of them are the people that have the mental health issues that I was speaking to and so 
a lot of times people are getting guns pulled on them or being accused of crimes or being shot for things. And it doesn't end up necessarily being a crime. And a lot of times these shooters are going to jail. Now, I know that that doesn't necessarily equate um, maybe these stats. But again, 125,000 to 3 million is a huge range. So there has to be some wiggle room or some things that we could just say, we'll pick that one out, pick that one out. And maybe that number gets closer. Um, pro the, the thing is, we've got a lot of problems in society that we can't shoot. And that number of things that we can is probably lesser. A lot of the crimes that were probably foiled. And let me just say, the people who stop these crimes with their handguns as responsible owners, uh, it's appreciated because it does help society. I'm not saying that it doesn't. I'm just saying that there's more opportunities in a lot of these instances that I've named versus just the one or two opportunities that somebody might have to um, be able to, you know, use their use a weapon um and then there was something else there was a, a stat about the fbi had grossly undercounted the amount of uh unarmed um uh, armed citizens who had stopped mass shootings and the uh, initial count was like four percent and then apparently that number had been bumped up to 34 percent. so again there's some real good being done by people who are responsible and really diligent. And I'm willing to bet a lot of those people know CPR. A lot of those people donate and do other things. It's just the people that are going to give it a bad name. And if, you know, I'm part of a demographic where people can give it a bad name, whether it's as a man, whether it's as a, a man of color, whether it's as a father, whether he, there's always somebody that's going to give us a bad name. So please understand where I'm coming from with this. Um, we've got a lot of problems. And I think that um, while some people can stand vigilant and that's what they want to do to contribute to society. I'm just looking at there's a whole lot of other areas and I would be remiss if I didn't point it out. Um, hopefully nobody feels offended or run down by this because that's not the point. It's just to realize we've got a lot of fires burning in, this, in our society and we can't just um, try to exact one, one way or we can't allow people with one train of thought to speak for a multitude of others who don't. So that's where I'm going to go with this. Um, I'm sure by now a lot of you are just cooking, the ones who even stayed this long. <laughs> so what are your thoughts? What's your ace up the sleeve? Advice, comment, experience. Please leave it in the chats. Thumbs up, and I'm sure there's going to be some thumbs down, and that's okay. I'm not mad at you. And of course, subscriptions to the channel are free. Free is a good thing. And so um, sharing it with your friends would be awesome too. But I would like to know what you guys think on this. And again, I just wanted to piggyback off of some, some thoughts on a throwback and freshen it up and just kind of bring it back around. So let me know what you think. And hopefully this finds everybody in your place, pursuit, or beginnings of total health, mind, body, and soul. Peace, love, unity, solidarity. And here's where some videos will pop up and you can check those out. Heh <laughs>